When you hear the word apartheid, what do you think of? Probably the disturbing images of racial segregation between whites and blacks in South Africa, where a regime ruled by a racist white minority declared themselves officially superior to the black majority, then proceeded to dominate them. South Africa's apartheid system officially ended in the mid-1990s, but that doesn't mean apartheid can't happen elsewhere. Here, in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, Palestinians are being forced off their land and out of their homes, separated and segregated by laws, walls and checkpoints. They live in a constant state of fear and insecurity and deliberately impoverished. While, on the other hand, Israeli authorities have given the Jewish Israeli population privilege over Palestinians in just about every facet of life. The question is, does this all amount to the crime of apartheid? First, the definition of apartheid. The crime against humanity of apartheid is perpetrated when particular serious human rights violations are committed with the purpose of establishing and maintaining a system of domination by one racial group over another and systematically oppressing them. But does this system exist in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories? And there's been a growing debate about whether the situation in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories is apartheid. And now is the time for us, as the world's largest human rights organization, to offer up our analysis. Our findings and criticism are directed not at the Jewish people, but at the Israeli state. It's the Israeli state that put in place the policies that implement the laws and the practices that oppress Palestinians. Well, Israeli leaders have been clear about their intentions from the beginning. In 1948, just before he became the first Prime Minister of Israel, Ben Gurion visited Lifta and other Palestinian areas near Jerusalem that were completely emptied of Palestinian residents following attacks by Jewish forces. He stated, There are no Arabs, 100% Jews. If we persist, it is quite possible that in the next six or eight months there will be considerable changes in the country, very considerable, and to our advantage. More than 70 years later, then Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu posted on Instagram that Israel is not a state of all its citizens, but rather the nation state of the Jewish people and only them. So. It's no surprise that Israel built a system of racially discriminatory laws, policies and practices that privilege only Jewish people. And Palestinians, well, Palestinians live there too. They were there before Israel was established. But, as we will explain, they've been trapped for decades in a system that treats them as a lesser, non-Jewish racial group. Before Israel was established in 1948, Palestinians comprised most of the population, around 70%, and owned the vast majority of private land, about 90%, in what was British Mandate Palestine. Jews, many of whom had emigrated from Europe, comprised around 30% of the population, and they and Jewish institutions owned about 6.5% of the land. The port of Haifa in Palestine lies shattered by bombs and strewn with dead. In the course of establishing Israel as a Jewish state in 1948, Israeli authorities acted to turn the situation on its head and were responsible for the mass expulsion of Palestinians and the destruction of hundreds of villages, forcing around 800,000 Palestinians out of their homes and lands. Thousands of Palestinians and Jews were killed in the context of attacks on civilians during this conflict. Today there are around 6 million Palestinian refugees who Israel denies the right to return to their homes. After the 1967 war, Israel occupied the Palestinian territories of the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and Gaza. Israel's brutal military rule, coupled with the establishment and expansion of illegal Jewish settlements, has coerced Palestinians into enclaves creating further fragmentation and segregation. The objective? maintain Jewish-Israeli hegemony and maximize control of land. In the city of Jerusalem, the Israeli official policy is to maintain at least a 60% Jewish majority. If you've always felt a deep yearning for Jerusalem, now is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity not only to stand within its gates, but also to build the home of your dreams there. So where do all the Palestinians live now? 
3.4 million live outside of Israel in the occupied territories, mainly in refugee camps in neighboring countries. 2.5 million Palestinians live in Israel and East Jerusalem, restricted to enclaves that make up around 3% of the entire area. 3 million Palestinians live in the occupied West Bank, but are only allowed to access 40% of the land to live and work. The rest of the area is for the Jewish Israeli settlers only. 2 million are trapped in the Gaza Strip, one of the most densely populated areas in the world. Fragmentation of the Palestinian society and the dispossession of their lands are key pillars of Israel's apartheid system to maintain domination and control. But there's more. The unequal structure of nationality and status, restrictions on freedom of movement, use of military rule, denial of right to political participation or the right to peaceful protest, and cruel separation of families all add to the complex system that we see today. The world in general hasn't woken up to the fact that there is an entrenched system of oppression against Palestinians across Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, wherever they may live, by the Israeli state. It's a system that's been put in place and maintained for decades, and it's that system that is the root cause of so many of the violations, the misery and the suffering that millions of Palestinians face on a daily basis. One way to understand this segregation and oppression is to look at the ID system. Jewish Israelis have only one ID card, with a status that grants them the rights to live almost anywhere they wish in the country. They can move freely with access to healthcare and vast resources. Palestinians, on the other hand, have four types of ID cards, if any at all. The kind of ID card you are given determines the level of rights you can enjoy and controls where you can go and what you can do. If you hold a green card, you are subject to military rule. And if you have a green card with a Gaza address, it means you are trapped in a 365 km square open air prison under Israeli military blockade in place since 2007. Israel controls what goes in and what goes out, from children's toys to medical supplies. 90% of the people have no access to safe drinking water, 47% are unemployed, 56% live in poverty. Palestinians with a Gaza ID are forbidden from going to Jerusalem in the West Bank, even if they have family there. Some people in the West Bank are considered to live there illegally and can be deported immediately to Gaza if found by the army, even if they have been in the West Bank for decades. Whereas, if you hold a green card which has a West Bank address, then you live here. This green card means you can live within specific enclaves surrounded by illegal Israeli settlements. And there's a separation wall and fences built around you since 2002, which Palestinians call the Apartheid Wall. It's 8 metres high in places and 700 kilometres long. That's twice the height of the Berlin Wall and more than four times its length. 80% of it is built inside the West Bank, occupying even more Palestinian land. There are separate roads for Israelis and Palestinians. Hundreds of checkpoints scattered throughout, not to mention the 54 years of occupation, which has devastated the lives of millions of Palestinians. Palestinians with a West Bank ID can travel to Gaza or East Jerusalem, but only if they receive a permit from the military to do so. This blue ID is for Palestinians in East Jerusalem. They can travel to the occupied West Bank as well as to Israel, but they are not citizens of Israel. They have only been granted a residency status. This means that they cannot vote in Israeli national elections, and if they leave East Jerusalem for too long, for example, to study or work abroad, or in other parts of the occupied West Bank, their residency is revoked, so they can't return. Since 1967, Israel has revoked the residency status of more than 14,600 Palestinians from East Jerusalem. Finally, Palestinian citizens of Israel. They have been through it all. They are the group that remained in Israel despite the ethnic cleansing in 1948. They lived under Israeli military rule that applied only to them and not Jewish Israelis for 18 years between 1948 and 1966. They were made citizens, but can never become nationals and enjoy equality unless they become Jewish, which the law prohibits. They are the only Palestinians who can run and vote in Israeli elections, and they can move relatively freely, 
but the inequality against them is never dismantled and they face daily institutional discrimination, including as members of parliament. And if this complex ID system wasn't enough to segregate the Palestinian community, in 2002, Israel introduced a law that prohibits family unification. That's right, denying Palestinians the right to live with their loved ones if their ID cards are different. And this woman is one of thousands of Palestinians who Israel will not issue any ID card. She can't travel, can't hug her family, only see them meters away across the border. Putting down roots, the family home, these are crucial parts of what make a strong community. To make sure Palestinian communities can't develop any further, Israel has made it almost impossible to grant building permits for Palestinian homes. So, Palestinians live in a catch-22 situation. In order to have shelter or develop their communities, they must build without a permit. And if they do so, Israel can demolish the structures on the basis that it was built without a permit. Right now, there are over 150,000 Palestinians currently living under the constant threat of demolition and forced eviction, many of them for the second or third time. In the West Bank, an average of 18 Palestinian structures were demolished every week in 2020. The same year, Israel issued 1,094 building permits for Jewish applicants, and only one for a Palestinian. This goes back to the heart of the issue. To maintain the state's character as Jewish, Israel systematically disadvantages Palestinians while privileging Jewish Israelis. This racist privilege has been enshrined in laws, policies and practices and it enables Palestinian resources to be taken in order to economically benefit Jewish Israeli citizens. The system of apartheid is the Israeli state's oppression and domination of Palestinians on a daily basis. It's the the laws, the policies and the practices that it puts in place and then implements to control Palestinians' daily lives. And then the, the crimes of apartheid. The crimes of apartheid are those acts, those violations, those patterns of violations that Israel is committing to create and then maintain that system of apartheid. Amnesty International and other rights organizations have been documenting patterns of human rights violations and international crimes for decades. These are the most visible and violent part of this system. At the end of May 2020, 4,236 Palestinians were held in Israeli prisons. And 352, including two children, were held without charge or trial. Between September 2000 and February 2017, Israeli forces killed 4,868 Palestinians in the occupied Palestinian territories, including 1,793 children, outside the context of armed conflict. And Amnesty International is not aware of any case in which an Israeli soldier has been convicted of willfully causing the death of a Palestinian in the occupied territories since 1987. This imbalance of rights, justice and accountability is never more clear than when a Jewish Israeli life appears to have more value than a Palestinian's. Israel's apartheid and its cruel and prolonged strategies deliberately disadvantage Palestinians wherever they live. They cannot claim and enjoy equality with Jewish Israelis. Look, everyone can make a difference. Together, we need to speak out on behalf of Palestinians. We need to speak about the human rights violations that they are suffering. We need to talk about the apartheid, the system of apartheid to which they are subjected. Because by campaigning together, putting pressure on the Israeli state, we can have this system of apartheid dismantled. Join us, join our campaign. Everyone has the power to make a difference.